Hello, welcome to this webinar, um, What You Need to Know About College Essays. Uh, my name is Katie Bacon. Um, I'm a college consultant um, and um, essay consultant for educational advocates and my colleague, Kara. Hello, everyone. I'm Kara Lynn Gazzaro. I am the essayist for um, educational advocates, um, and I work with um, students on their Common App essays as well as graduate students and most recently law school student applications. So the topics we're gonna to touch on today include the Common App Personal Essay, which goes to all colleges, and also how to think about supplemental essays. Some colleges have these, some don't. Um, we're also gonna talk about what colleges are looking for in essays, how to brainstorm them, and ways you can and can't use ChatGPT. Um, so next please, Kara. Um, so um, the Common App essay purpose, um, the personal statement is the only part of the application where the admissions reader hears directly from the student. In other words, gets a chance to hear their voice. So very few colleges offer interviews these days. So the essay is your opportunity to speak directly to the admissions team and tell them who you really are beyond the numbers and facts. It's your chance to tell admissions officers what you want them to know about you what you're like as a person, and what you would bring to a college community. So we always ask our students to think about what do you want the college to know about you that won't be obvious from the, reading the rest of your application? What are the qualities, characteristics, values, and attributes that make you who you are? Colleges will learn quite a lot about you from reading the application, transcript, and recommendations. They'll know your grades, your activities, your courses, et cetera. So think about something that is really important about you that you really want them to understand and that will make colleges want you as part of their community. Examples of such characteristics might include that I love challenges and find satisfaction in overcoming them, that I'm honest, logical, fair-minded, reliable, that I make the most of my time and opportunities, that I'm a caring person and my relationships with friends are very important to me. Next one, please. I think we're there. Who reads the essay? Who reads the essay? Um, so sometimes it's read by a single admissions reader or by two readers. Some colleges read by committee and others send the application to committee only when the two readers disagree on the decision. Um, however it's read, admissions readers work long days during the application season, so catching their attention with a meaningful essay can only help you. Next one, please. So how do they read it? Most applications are read on computer screens, and on average, admissions officers spend less than 15 minutes reading each application. Because they spend very little time reading the application, you want to capture their attention, both with how you begin the essay, the story you tell, and the details you include. We'll talk more about this later, but by capturing their attention, I don't necessarily mean writing about something very dramatic, but instead picking a story that captures who you are and telling it well. Essays are important, but they're not as critical as your grades and course choices, meaning the rigor of your courses. That said, essays have gained an importance for those schools where you may submit your application without your test scores. And they also tend to matter more at colleges that are more selective and that admit less than 50% of applicants. Admissions officers say that only about 5% of essays are outstanding. Another 5% are very poor and the vast majority are average and reinforce, but don't change the admissions decision. Next one, please. So what makes a successful essay? What makes a successful essay? Um, so a successful essay conveys something meaningful that won't be found elsewhere in the application. It tells a story that brings that meaningful message to life. It thoroughly answers the prompt. It often shows personal growth or change. It feels authentic, not over-polished. Sometimes students feel a lot of pressure to come up with a quote, important topic, but everyday moments that matter often make the best essays. The essay topic and essay itself shouldn't feel forced. Recently, I had the chance to hear from Tulane University's admissions director, and she said that, quote, for us, the biggest thing that stands out are the applicants' essays. 
We want an authentically written 18 year old essay. It should not be over polished and over edited. We want to know who the students are and how they would mesh with our community. A lot of the times it comes down to the essay. Don't over edit, let them shine through. Next slide, please. The prompts. Um, so I'm not going to read um, all the prompts, um, but um, these are the seven um, common app prompts that students can choose from this year. Um, they've stayed basically the same over the past few years, and you'll see that you can really find a prompt to fit any topic. So part of the process, uh, part of our process is to have students read through the prompts and try to really understand the questions and what they're trying to figure out about the student. And just so you know, um, number seven is the admissions officer's least favorite. Um, share an essay on any topic of, of your choice. Um, it can be one already written or one that responds to a different prompt or one of your own design. Um, and the reason for this is that often what the student turns in is something that they've probably written previously, and it may not show an arc of growth or change. Next slide, please. So this is the brainstorm idea framework that we um, give to our students and have them think through as they're coming up with their ideas. Um, so we ask them to think through three questions. What I want colleges to know, what my story is, and why does it matter? So in this case, um, uh, the student, what, they, what I want colleges to know, I'm not afraid to speak up about injustices and I work hard to make positive change. My story, the National Honor Society at my school required a weighted GPA that excluded students who took few honors or AP classes, even if they received all A's. I worked for months with the school council to get the policy changed. And why does it matter? The previous policy was unfair to students such as those who are neurodi neurodiverse, as well as students of color and other groups who are underrepresented in honors and AP courses, and went against the school's commitment to equity. So this is an example from one of our students a few years ago. Um, and um, in terms of the three components, the why it matters is definitely the most important in terms of both brainstorming and the essay, because that's the part that sheds light on what sort of person the applicant is. And so here you can tell the student is someone who cares about fairness and justice and is willing to fight for those values. Next slide, please. Um, so this is an excerpt from that essay. Throughout the meeting, I faced many different challenges to my views. One parent said that students like me should just accept the policy. After the meeting ended, I felt defeated. Although a few teachers and parents were on my side, the majority weren't. It was a moment when I realized I was becoming an adult and facing the world's hard truths, that sometimes situations are just really unfair. So this is clearly the reflective part of the student's essay. And you can see here that the lesson the student learned isn't a simplistic one with a tidy ending, and that's okay. Next slide, please. Um, so here's another example of the brainstorm idea framework that we use. Um, so in this case, what I want the colleges to know. After feeling torn for years as part of an interfaith family, I came to understand and accept the good things that come with it. My story. My father is Jewish and my mother is Catholic and she agreed to raise us Jewish. I wanted to be like my cousins in a large Italian Catholic family with many traditions. When Hanukkah fell on Christmas Eve one year, it helped me realize that my extended family has always been connected regardless of our different faiths. And why does it matter? I came to understand how hard this arrangement was for both of my parents, not just me, and how circumstances are not black and white. I now fully appreciate my interfaith family. So again, the why it matters here is not a simplistic message, but this student was able to give a sense of their empathy and their ability to appreciate other perspectives and needs. This essay ended up being very powerful because of the intellectual and emotional journey the student was able to convey. So here's an uh, excerpt from that essay. Next slide, please. This past year, for the first time, I joined my extended family for a sunrise Easter mass on the beach. In the pre-dawn dark, we made our way toward the glowing lanterns and wooden crosses. When it was time for my cousins and mom to go up for communion, I sat content, tracing my fingers in the sand, 
perfectly happy to listen to the hymns without singing along. I felt welcome here. I belonged. So this section of the essay shows, I'm sure you've heard about showing, not telling. When showing, the reader uses description and imagery to bring the reader into the moment. The writer uses description and imagery. Um, for many students, it's really hard to show, not tell. That's something we work with them on by asking them detailed questions about what they've written, getting them to layer on the details that eventually paint a full, compelling picture. Next slide, please. And um, Kara, it's on to you now. Okay, great. So um, in the next slides, I'm going to talk a little bit about the topics, move on to supplemental essays, and then I'm going to discuss a little bit about how to work with AI or artificial intelligence when it comes to the essay prompts and actually producing your essay for the Common App. Um, so a word on the topics. Any topic well done can make for a successful college essay. And Katie did talk about this already, but students a lot of times will look for something very dramatic or will look for something that you know, has this wow factor to it. But if it's important to you, it can make a good essay. Sometimes you just need some guidance from someone who has some experience who can help you work through a draft, edits, and then polish that idea so that it comes across as something very meaningful to you. And it tells the committee something about who you are as a person. That's what the essay aims to teach, and that's what the essay aims to do. So, Students should never feel pressured to write about the trauma in their lives. They have a right to protect their own privacy. This can be a very touchy issue. A touchy issue. I've had parents come to me before and say, the most powerful thing that has happened to my child was also something very traumatic, and I'm not sure that he or she wants to talk about it. And generally I say, well, that's probably not the right topic for the common app essay. So you, students should not feel the need to talk about a topic that is traumatic. In fact, if they can't, look at it objectively, it probably isn't a good topic. Um, this is one of the reasons why we normally go through several topics with students and have a couple options. They may start writing one topic and realize that it doesn't flow, it's not coming across the way they want, and then we shift to another. So you really shouldn't even pigeon your whole, pigeonhole yourself into one particular topic, if at all possible, especially if it's something that's of a sensitive nature. So when discussing a challenge, students should have some distance and perspective. Just like I said, they should be able to look objectively at the, at the topic um, from the event and can articulate how they have grown from the experience. So the whole idea of the essay is that there is some type of change or growth or maturity that we note in the process of the essay. This is what the college admissions team needs to see. They want to see how a student has grown over the four years in high school or how a particular challenge or experience changed their perspective, possibly made them more open minded or gave them a new perspective on something that they hadn't considered before. Some topics, this is an important one, some topics are overused. The service trip, the athletic injury like the ACL tear, the big game. Uh, this is something that it's very difficult to make your essay stand out when college admissions teams read so many essays like this. So we generally help students explore why they wanna discuss this topic. And is there something else that conveys a similar message, but doesn't focus on one of these more rote and static topics? Because it's gonna be very difficult to make your essay stand out when it's a topic that is so widely used and even overused. So supplemental essays, besides the primary essay, the personal statement, a lot of schools will have supplemental essays. Generally, if they have supplemental essays, if even if they say they're optional, I tell students to do them, okay? There are two types of supplemental essays that we find. They generally fall into two categories. The first is why this college prompt. And for that, they're generally gonna ask a question like what inspired you to apply to Union and what about our college most excites you? Or they might say, please describe why you're interested in attending Tulane University. And notice they have word limits to them. Sometimes students find that the shorter essays are tougher because you need to get your point across very succinctly and really nail down what it is that you wanna convey. The other area is the why major problem. Why are you interested in majoring in such and such? Why is this your first choice? The second would be describe the unique qualities that attract you to the specific undergraduate college or school to which you are applying at the University of Michigan. 
how would that curriculum support your interests? And then required for all applicants, minimum of 100 words, maximum of 550. So when you're looking at these essays, what do you want to keep in mind? The first thing is you will notice that some of these questions, the last one in particular, has multiple parts. The first thing is you want to make sure that you answer all the questions. You don't just want to focus on describe the unique qualities, but ignore the curriculum. Okay, so you want to make sure you answer all the questions. The second main point is that you need to do your research. Supplemental essays will require research. You should look at the majors that interest you. What courses are being taught? Why do those courses excite you? Who's teaching those courses? What are their research interests? Does it overlap with something that you'd like to study? What is the college's mission? For example, Providence College, it's a Catholic college. That is implicit in what they teach. It's part of their core curriculum. You would want to do the research and do the groundwork so that your essay is intelligently written and shows that you understand the culture of that institution. Because when it comes to the supplemental essays, it's really a matter of cultural fit, okay? So a point to keep in mind when you're also looking at the supplemental essays, if an essay is really hard for you to write, that it doesn't resonate with you, that tells you something about the culture of the institution. So you might wanna consider whether that is the best place for you. So it can really help guide your application decisions at the same time as you're writing these essays. All right, so what happens with the essays, regardless of whether it's the personal statement a supplemental essays, a supplemental essay that's 550 words or a supplemental essay that's one question. Sometimes they will ask you, you know, give me one sentence. So regardless, there are three main phases. Content, you decide exactly what it is you wanna talk about. Get your ideas in place. This will typically require more than one draft, even if it's very short. Um, the draft will be written, rewritten and reflected upon. Once we have a good working essay draft, we'll then start to look at the structure. Is everything in the order that it should be? Is it coherent? Does it make sense? Are we getting, are we seeing progress in the essay? Is there a timeline if it's a particular event? And then finally, the polish. The polish comes in at the very end, and that's where we really look at the nitty gritty, the grammar. Are commas in the right place? Is everything spelled correctly? Are paragraphs aligned properly? things like that. Now moving on to the use of AI, such as ChatGPT. So at this point, you cannot turn on the news, go on social media, or do pretty much anything without coming across AI, which of course stands for artificial intelligence. It's pretty much everywhere. The most popular one is ChatGPT. Right now it's ChatGPT4. And what I'm going to address are the ethical issues that come along with using some type of artificial intelligence. When ChatGPT first came out in the academic environment, the first thing that everyone was doing was trying to prevent students from using it entirely. In classrooms, all of a sudden, faculty wanted to have Turnitin put into their courses. In case you're not familiar, Turnitin is software that's been around for quite some time, but it's really in its heyday now with AI, Turnitin will actually be able to detect with some certainty, faculty still need to do their due diligence, but detect if a student has plagiarized. So initially that was the response. If students use AI, we will identify the AI and we will punish the student for it. That's not really the best way now. AI is everywhere. You see it in your daily lives and you're probably gonna see it when you graduate from college and you're working. So how can we use something like ChatGPT in an ethical way where the ideas are still your own, but it may help guide you a little bit. So you can use ChatGPT for verification. So my first suggestion or direction to students is go to the, go to the website if you wanna find out and research. But some students might say, could you tell me what the mission statement is at Johnson & Wales? That's some form of research. It's just a streamlined way of doing research. Um, but you should also know that ChatGPT ends with information, only pulls information from up to 2021. So for example, if you said, what is the strategic plan at Brown? 
those strategic plans are altered usually every four to five years. So the strategic plan that they tell you about may not be the most current one. So you want to be very careful that if you're using ChatGPT, you don't consider that to be a hard and fast rule and concrete information that's factual. You need to fact check on your own. What also might be helpful is if you know which topic you want to use, you can say, this is what I'd like to talk about. Ask ChatGPT to help you do an outline. I always have students do an outline when they're writing an essay because it's very hard to write in a very clear and concise manner when your ideas are all over the place. So I usually have students say, okay, what do you want to discuss in the introduction? What are the two body paragraphs going to look like? What is that closing paragraph? What do you want to convey? What do you want to leave with the admissions team? ChatGPT kind of help you with that and give you some guidelines. Again, not a hard and fast rule, but a way to kind of get you started. Okay. And then it can help you generate vocabulary. I mean, you can use a thesaurus, but you can say, I've used the word school seven times. Is there another way that I can say this? And ChatGPT can kind of help you with that. Okay. So just as a side note, the Common App has an affirmation statement that I'm not going to read for you, but it's pretty much your signing to let them know that the information in that application was written by you, that you wrote it, including the essay, that nobody else wrote it for you, that nobody else generated that information for you. So this is very serious because you'll notice that possible disciplinary action can include admissions revocation, expulsion, or revocation of course credit. These are things, it, it's so not worth it. You do not want this type of mark on your record. So I would just say to err on the side of caution and be very careful and strategic about how you use AI or the entire application. Make sure that you're doing the work and that someone else isn't doing it for you. And that brings me to the next topic, which is the parent's role in the essay process. And I think that this is something that we need to mention. Parents want the best for their, for their children. And it can be very difficult to step back and let them work through the essay writing process. It happens several times a year where a student will produce something or share an essay with me that they clearly didn't write. And if I probe a little bit, a lot of times it's like, oh, well, my mom thought this would be a good topic or my dad worked for this company and thought that it this would be helpful. I caution parents from getting that involved because remember what Katie said, we want this essay to be written by an 18 year old. We don't want it to be written by a mature adult who's had much more life experience. Admissions teams look at essays all the time. They can detect whether something was written by a student or not. So again, if a student is signing an affirmation statement claiming that the work is their own, we want that to be factual and honest. So what can you do? You can help them brainstorm to storm topics. Like maybe they'll say, well, I wanna talk about a challenge, but I can't think of anything. You can brainstorm with them. You can sit down with them and say, okay, well, let's talk about this time or that time. And then, you know, a good time to reminisce about things that were impactful for you or for your family. Respect your child's choice of what to write about in the essay. This is another difficult one. Sometimes parents will say, I think that she should write about eeks. And when we kind of work through it with the student, it doesn't speak to them. It's not powerful for them, or they have a really difficult time writing about it. This also comes into play dealing with traumatic events. Sometimes a parent will come to me and say, um, you know, my student had this terrible traumatic thing that happened, and I think it's going to make them stand out in the essay. So I think that she should write about it. And then when I talk to the student, they're not in a place mentally where they're, they can write about it. So that can also be a difficult conversation, but I just ask parents to keep in mind that this is a reflection of your child's thoughts and your child's experiences. So we want that captured in the essay. You can provide feedback. Does the essay answer the prompt fully? Is my child sharing something meaningful and telling a story to bring that message to life? So when students work with educational advocates, we ask that they only work with the consultant during the drafting phase through the edits. Once it's polished and we're at 
the final copy or close to the final copy, I'll encourage them to share it with a parent or both parents or someone else. But during the revisionary phases, we always ask students to only be sharing it with the consultant. That is because too many cooks in the kitchen will, I don't remember the rest of it, but too many cooks, it just makes a mess of the essay because there are too many conflicting points of view and the student has a really difficult time. And sometimes you end up with like a procrastination paralysis because they can't write anything and they end up with writer's block because their mother's telling them one thing, their consultant's telling them something else. So it can be really hard. Um, avoid directly editing and writing, ask questions instead of editing the copy yourself. I know it's a struggle. Um, the essay should look like a teenager wrote it because a teenager did. So you don't wanna use vocabulary or insert vocabulary that is not intuitive and appropriate for a teenager. And an outside writing consultant or a college consultant can help a child choose a topic and guide them through the steps. We are trained with working with students at all levels so we do this process all the time. It can be really difficult for parents, mainly because they're personally invested in the process. For us, we can have some objectivity that really helps develop the essay. So thank you so much for joining us today. Katie, any last words? I don't think so. Um... No, just that um, Karen and I uh, both really love um, helping students with their essays and helping them figure out the stories um, to tell. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it from me. Great. So you can reach out to us at Educational Advocates. Um, it, you can fill out a form right on our website and our administrative team will direct you to the appropriate person if you're working strictly on essays. You might be directed to me or Katie. And then in addition to that, our consultants can also help with college lists. They can help students in the entire application process. So we hope you enjoy the information we've shared today and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Have a great night.